sense, not being tired. So kind of the go-to text there is Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Most of you can quote it. It says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. And you know, this text is commonly used. It can feel cliche, uh, but I'm confident that when we break it down and digest it the way we should, if we really digest this text, we can see why this one simple verse is and should be a staple in the diet of high performance, healthy, mature Christians. Did you get that point? Because it's important for you to get that. There are some verses, there are some concepts that are so important that regardless of how many times you've heard them, you still need to hear them again. So, um, let's jump into this. And I want to start off by asking a question. How often have you asked the question, how are you doing, and the person says, oh, we're doing good, doing okay, doing well. And you know they're lying. Yeah. How many times have you been guilty of that? Someone asked you, how are you doing? And you say, oh, we're doing great. I, I did that today. Devin, I, I, we were at the, uh, at the Dollar General, and, and Devin said, hey, how are you doing? I said, oh, dude, we're doing great. How are you doing? And I realized, you know, I'm stressed. My daughter's in the hospital. Annie's got some, has a scary procedure coming up. And, and so I didn't want to dump all my problems on him, but I recognized the need to be honest and say, you know, God's good, and we're, we're facing some challenges, and they're, they're difficult, but this is what God's doing in and through them, and, and you know, we had a good time. Um, so when you say, or when you hear someone else say, oh, I'm doing okay, or oh, we're doing well, we're doing good, you need to pause, and you need to ask yourself the question, am I really doing well? Am I de really doing okay? Am I really doing good? And to go a step further, let me tell you, you're not doing well, you're not doing okay, you're not doing good, if you're not doing right. Ooh, hello, somebody's preaching. You awake, still awake? Yes. You're not doing okay if you're not doing right. You're not doing well and you're not doing good if you're not doing right. If you're not doing the right thing the right way with the right attitude and the right timing and the right consistency, you're not doing well. You're not doing okay. So, and, and you know what's scary? It's scary how, and, and sad, how well the enemy has done at convincing you and I, at convincing Christians that it's normal and it's acceptable to deal with the consequences of sin. So we're not doing well, because we're not doing right. Our timing is off, our, our attitude is off, we're, we're sinning we're, and we're comfortable in it. We're not consistent, and yet we're just trained to say, oh, I'm doing good, doing okay, doing well. And we actually become convinced, and we're actually becoming conditioned to believe that certain consequences of sin are natural and normal and you just have to learn to accept it. This is the case with our physical bodies. We come to accept, well, if you get older, this is the way it's going to go. Well, that's not automatic. Well, with your marriage, guys, have you ever been, been around a group of guys and it's, well, you're married. You know, this is how it is, pal. <laughs> well, really? Is that the way it's supposed to be? Yeah. Ladies, have you ever been in a conversation? Well, that's a man for you. <laughs> that's, yeah. You see how the enemy is conditioning us to see as natural and normal and acceptable to be dealing with things that shouldn't be acceptable, at least for Christians. Yes? Well, one of the reasons that this is the case is found in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, about getting weary. So, get this sentence, it's important. Weariness is never a justification for doing wrong. Being tired, being weary, is never a justification for doing wrong. It is a notification that something is wrong. 
Get that. That's good. If I do say so myself. And if you're using your weariness as a justification for doing wrong, my friend, you are on the wrong side of your relationship with Christ. Because God says things like the sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Right? So weariness is never a justification for doing something that is clearly wrong. I'm not saying we shouldn't adjust our expectations when we are tired or weary, because we should. It's kind of a lesson. But weariness is never a justification for doing wrong. It is a notification that something is wrong. And that needs to be addressed. So, I want to just show out, I want to contrast two different concepts. And again, you've heard this before. Uh, the first one is tired from being good. You're tired from being good. We're talking about end of the day tired, end of the week tired, end of the job tired. End of the project, tired. End of the season, tired. The kind of tired where you look back and you go, Whoa, that was a day. Whoa, that was a long, dark tunnel. Man, that was a difficult challenge to overcome. But we got her done. And this sort of tired is natural, it's healthy, it's good for you. Hear me, that's good. You know, some people, they have a hard time sleeping because they have been on their derriere all day long doing nothing more than looking into a box and then they wonder why they can't sleep. God expects us to be tired. We should work hard and tackle challenges. And by the way, you can work very, very hard all day from your backside. I've been there before. But... My friends, I want you to get this, because this is important. If if you'll digest this, it'll help you. If you can learn to collapse into your chair at the end of the day, or fall into your bed at the end of the day, and look back and say, I got the job done. Or, I moved the ball an inch. Or, I saw five ways not to do that. (laughs) Right? If you can lay your head down at night exhausted and say, with joy, my nose is pointed in the right direction, I'm doing the right thing, I'm making the right moves, I'm in the fight of it, this is hard, this is difficult, the reason why I'm exhausted is because I'm doing right. That's joy, isn't it? It may not be happiness, but it's joy. Exhaustion. Flat out, you know, hit the pillow snoring. Tired. Can, if you will discipline yourself, if you'll let it, it can set off joy in your heart. Are you doing that? Are you? Are you allowing the the signal of just exhaustion to signal and to get you to question, did I do right today? Did I move the ball down the field? Did, as I look back on today, did did I say the right thing, do the right thing? Was my timing right? Was my consistency right? Am I tired because I did right today? And if you can answer yes, well, go to bed or go to sleep enjoying that. And you'll be surprised that the joy of the Lord is your strength and you'll find, you'll, that you'll wake up rested and ready to hit it again hard tomorrow. Yeah? So, did did God in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11, command His people, the Jews, to do this? Yeah, every week. It's called Sabbath. They were to work very, very hard and then take a day off and not work for the express purpose of evaluating themselves and doing exactly what we just talked about. Did we do right last week? Did Jesus, in Mark chapter 6, did He instruct His disciples to do this? Did Jesus rest? Did Jesus instruct His disciples to rest? Did He help them recognize that when you're hurt or when you're frustrated or when you're tired, that that's a sign that you're doing right? Yeah. So, 
God instructed us to rest, but to rest purposefully. Okay? Now, again, fatigue is a very important signal. If you're tired, God designed you that way for a reason. You cannot run indefinitely because after so long, things start breaking. Right? If you've ever been in the military, you, you've run longer than you thought your feet should have been able to run, right? You've done push-ups longer than you thought a human shoulders should be able to move, right? And those of us in ministry, we might have taught a Sunday school class or served in a certain position much longer than what is even healthy. God instructs us to recognize fatigue and respond to it. And this tough guy mentality that we, this pride and arrogance that has seeped into the church of, well, I can just go and go and go and go. Well, sometimes you need to check your ego at the door and get the job done. And in order to get the job done, you have to factor in rest. If you don't have time to rest, you don't have time to... Thank you. If you don't have time to rest, you don't have time to win, because rest is a part of the cycle. Your heart contracts and expands. Your lungs expand and contract. If the sun comes up, the sun goes down. That's the way God designed it to be. And if you think you can ignore that and ignore being tired and just keep on going because you're so awesome, life's going to hit you like a ton of bricks. And then you're going to cry out to God. God's going to say, are you serious? I designed this whole world to show you one simple thing. I gave you a mama to tell you, it's 9 o'clock and you go get bed. But you won't listen. And so, oh, you're tired and you're exhausted and things are starting to break down and your circadian rhythms are out of control? Really? Oh, whine and cry. I'll just perform some miracle magic to deal with all the things that you're suffering because you have ignored what I taught. Ooh. Yeah? God, in multiple places in Scripture, God, as an example Himself, showed us that you don't have time to, if you don't have time to rest, you don't have time to win. Plan it in. Guys, think of it this way. Raise your hand if you can drive a stick. Okay, you can, if you can drive a stick. Lydia, you can't drive a stick. <laughs> She can take a stick, right? And, and All right. If you know how to drive a stick, then you understand you can't drive the, drive the whole way in first gear. What's going to happen if you do that? You might get there on time. You might get there on time. You have to... And, and isn't kind of the key to learn that coordination and to know... And, and, and you know that your kid is learning, that you know and that your kid is learning how to drive a stick. When they don't actually have to stop, they have to go around a curve and come around it and slap it, not in the first, but second or third based on the car, right? And they get that feel to know what gear is appropriate for the place that they are. Is this sinking in? You know what I mean? You have got to learn how to change gears and adopt the right gear for the appropriate time of where you are. Are you doing that? Some of you, the sun's gone down and you're still in the wrong gear. Some of you, you're laying in bed and you're still in the wrong gear. Some of you, it's noon and you're still in the wrong gear. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a way that a day ought to go. There's a way that the job ought to go. And wise people, especially Christians, we ought to know where rest factors into that. And we ought to be in the right... Being in the right year at the right time is critical for getting the job done and getting where you're supposed to be. I'm telling you folks, this is non-negotiable. You better learn this or you'll burn out 
and worse, you'll teach your kids how to do the exact same thing. So, again, eating, exercise, resting, this is doing what it takes to get the job done. So, here, here's the reason why this is so important for all of you Rambo tough guys out there. Inevitably, if you ignore being tired from being good and don't shift into the right gear and get the rest you need, eventually it's going to turn into being tired of being good. Hello. Ever been there? Where you're tired of being good. It's not tired from. You're tired of being good. You're tired of doing right. And what happens then? You know, people who are tired of being right tend to stop doing right. Yes? We get tired of it. And this happened. And why does this happen? Because we don't experience that joy of falling into the bed, looking back on the day and saying, hey, did we move the job? Did we get things done? We don't do that. We lay our head down, and it's we, we just we don't think about it. All, we're thinking about tomorrow. We're thinking about all the things that all the things that we're not getting, all the things that we're not happy about, and we don't have that joy that God designed to be our strength. And so, when you're doing right, but you're not taking the time to pay attention to where the ball's going down the field, you're not paying attention, taking the time to rest in the joy of the Lord, the confidence that God can take you forward, that God is moving you forward. Then what happens is. You get tired of being and doing right, and you start losing hope. And when you start losing hope, that's the same as running out of gas. And when you run out of gas, what happens? The car stops. And you feel like an idiot on the side of the road. And if you're the husband, you ought to really feel like an idiot. If you run your family out of gas. Or run your tires full and they blow up on the side of the road. We had a long talk about that today. And last week when the same thing happened. Anyway, so, tired of being good. That is a dangerous, dangerous place to be. Tired of reading your Bible. Tired of praying. Tired of worship. Tired of going to church. Tired of effective and biblical communication. Tired of parenting. Tired of being a spouse. Yeah. And when you get tired of being good, bad things start to happen. You are in danger because it does, being tired doesn't change the wages of sin, does it? So, when we find ourselves weary of our roles, tired of being a dad, Tired of being a mom, tired of being a husband, tired of being a wife, tired of being a Sunday school teacher, tired of being a fill in the blank. You need to take a break from that role. Now that's so ridiculously simple, is it not? It's just simple. If you're tired, if, if you're getting tired of being that thing, then you need a break from that. Let me ask you this: Have you ever gone on a vacation, spent thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars or whatever? You get back from vacation and you're just as exhausted as before you went. You're just as frustrated. You're just as tired of your spouse. You're just as tired of your kids. You're just as tired of your parents. Why is that? Because you took a break from one of your roles. You didn't go to work. And you know what? There's this weird thing happening. You know, a lot of people, they go to work to get away from their family. They rest from their spouse. They rest from their kids. They rest from their parents when they go to work or when they go to school. And so they didn't really need a rest from their jobs. They were fine with their job. So it's time for vacation. And what do you do? You're still with your spouse. And you're still with your kids. And that, that's what you need a rest from. So you spend all this money and all this time, and you get back and you're miserable. Why? you have less gas in the tank. Why? Because you didn't really rest. That's why guys need to hang out with guys. And gals need to hang out with gals. And kids need to hang out with kids. And adults need to hang out with adults sometimes with no kid. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't do this, you're ignoring God's clear principles. 
and you're going to burn out. And you're going to get tired from doing good. It's going to turn into being tired of being and doing good. And that's when bad things happen. So, fitness is the result of the proper balance of nutrition, exercise, and rest. Correct? And rest is involved in it. Listen, to, I'm almost done. The more physically fit you are, the more it takes and the longer it takes for you to get worn down. Right? The more physically fit you are, the more disciplined and faithful you are at eat, exercise, rest physically, the more it takes and the longer it takes for you to get worn out. Is that true spiritually? Yes. If you're not eating spiritually, if you're not resting and exercising in the right balance spiritually, you will be wearing down easier and faster than you should. And your spouse, your, your kids, your church can't count on you the way they should because you are not being disciplined to manage you. One of the brilliant examples of this, I've said this before, Brett Oakland, one of the pastors at Faith, uh, Steve Byers, the lead pastor, uh, laid out what he wanted all of the pastors in his staff to accomplish that year. Brent sat down with his wife. They looked at the list. He came back, sat down with Pastor Byers, and he goes, I can accomplish any of these things. I can't accomplish all of these things. That's wisdom. That's smart. And he goes, you tell me which ones you want me to do. I'm telling you, I can do about two-thirds of this and do it right. His ego could have gotten him in trouble. Thankfully, he had a wise wife that helped him get his ego in check. You know, and again, last point. Consistency is the key to success. And consistency is the key to faithfulness, yes? Whether it's finances or, or faith or fitness, consistency is the key. And you cannot and you will not be consistent if you don't get this rest thing under control. You'll burn out. You'll get tired of. You'll get tired. You'll stop. So this isn't negotiable. You've got to do it, and you've got to do it right. Now, the reason you guys are hearing this sermon is because Pastor Brian's got to get it right. I'm doing horrible. This is why I, we're going to go shoot something or do something, right? Because I need dude time. and I'm a water basket. Basket, there we go. I'm down. See what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm not preaching this from an ivory tower. I'm preaching this from... This is what it takes to win, and I'm about winning. I want to win. Because winning isn't, look at me. Winning is, look at them. Look at what they're doing. Look at what we built. And it's just got to be.